Yo me enojé con él que no estaba preparado cuando llegué. Mi gente, mi gente, yo soy de Jor, tú lo tienes. Today I wanted to talk about another cool conversational tip for those that might be a little more advanced. There's this really cool thing you can do with the word que, which generally means what, or it can mean that, depending on the context, and you can essentially add it to create more dynamic conversation, similar to what I was talking about in the last video. If you didn't see that, check the link in the description. I think you'll like it. And so the way that this concept works, let's use an example. Well, I'll say it in Spanish first, and it'll make more sense. Let's say I'm about to pick up one of my boys and we about to go see a movie or play some basketball and I pick him up. Yo me enojé con él que no estaba preparado cuando llegué. So I said, I was annoyed with my friend because he wasn't ready when I arrived. Now it doesn't translate exactly to that word for word, but just to give you the idea, it helps you to flow better in your sentence structure, your syntax, whatever term you want to use. It's a better flow. Instead of saying like, me enojé con mi amigo porque me di cuenta que blah, 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 blah. You can cut out some fluff and you can add extra flow. You know, go on Spanish, the Spanish side of TikTok and start scrolling or Spanish side of Instagram or some YouTube videos of some native speakers and you'll hear this countless times. They'll just use it and keep going and going. It's not a filler word so much as it is. Maybe it is a filler, but it's more of a transitional phrase. It's really, really cool. Maybe I can give you a few more examples. Yo no había hecho la tarea que no me parecía necesario para sacar una buena nota. That don't make no sense. You need to do homework to get a good grade. But I think you get the point. And the whole translating from Spanish to English, it's kind of weird because like I always tell you guys, it's important to treat the two languages as separate entities. Because they're two separate things and so you have to keep that in mind that's why full immersion is of the utmost importance i'm going on a tangent make sure a lot of the things that you do in english reading books consuming media scrolling on your phone switch your phone to spanish get books in spanish write some stuff out in spanish test your vocabulary and do this with native speakers and they'll be like oh habla muy bien español donde aprendiste i remember the host or the whole family i was in when i when i met the sister the older sister she was like Tú me parecía cosarricense, like I thought you were Costa Rican the way you were speaking. And I was flattered. I was like, like, like I appreciate that. You know, although my Spanish isn't perfect, I still make a lot of errors and mess up in a lot of ways. I really, really appreciated that. It made me feel good. And that's something that I've always naturally done. I'd like to think that I do it. It's something that I've kind of picked up on. I would assume it's something that I do. Um, but nevertheless, it's a great tip. Utilize it to improve your Spanish and to sound more like a native. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe for more. Most importantly, share it with a friend or someone you know so we can grow together and I can keep giving you guys valuable content. Nos vemos.